Good morning. Today is Sunday, January 8th, 2023. We begin this week, Shamos, the book of Exodus, the second book of the five books of the Torah. What is the story of this book? What is the theme that unifies from beginning to end that this book tells us? Our parsha begins, the Ela Shemos B'nai Yisrael, and these are the names of the children of Israel, which become the tribes of the Jewish people, Reuven, Shimon, etc., the sons of Yaakov. It's strange that we would have this list at the very beginning of this Torah portion when we just had this list two weeks ago in the Parsha of Ayigash. The Torah told us all of the names of Yaakov's sons and his whole family. <coughs> we just had these names. <coughs> Why repeat them here? <coughs> Excuse me. There are a couple of different answers given. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Rashi gives the following answer. The Afal Pisha Manan Bechayehem, Bishmosam, even though two weeks ago in the Parsha, the Torah told us the names of each of Yaakov's sons while they were still alive. Chazar Umanan Bimisasan. In our Torah portion, the beginning of the Parsha Shmos, the Torah repeats them, their names, after they had passed away, because that's how the, be the book begins, after all of the sons of Yaakov had passed away in Egypt. In order to teach us, this repetition in, is in order to teach us their dearness to God, how precious they are to God. They are compared to the stars in the sky. Shemotzian umachnisan b'mispar ubishemosam, where God takes them out and brings them back in to view them with their names and the number of them because of God's great love and cherishing of every one of them. The Sfas Emes the great Hasidic writer points out when the Rashi quotes the word Lahodia to tell us who is God telling? Who is God letting know how dear and cherished every single one is? Says the Svas Elmas, he's telling us. He is telling you that you are precious to God. You, every one of us, we are a star that God cherishes and appreciates by name. That's how the book begins. And then God introduces himself to Moshe. Ata lecha ve'esh lecha cha el paro. God appears to Moshe at the burning bush and says to Moshe, I want you to go to Paro. It's time for the Jewish people to leave Egypt and I want you to be the one to go to Paro and to arrange and facilitate and lead the Jewish people out of Egypt. And now Moshe has the chance to respond. Moshe has the chance to speak directly to God. He has the opportunity for the first time in his life to be able to say to God whatever he wants, to ask God any question that he wants. Imagine. Imagine if you had the opportunity. God speaks to you, and now you have the opportunity to ask God a question. What would you ask? What would be the first question that you would ask God if you had the opportunity? 
Vayomer Moshe Hel El God says to Moshe, I'm sorry, Moshe says to God, the first question he asks, Mi Anochi Ki Elech El Paro. Who am I to be the one to go to Paro? Mi Anochi, who am I? The first question. Moshe does not ask about the secrets of the world. Moshe does not ask about what's going to happen in the future. Moshe does not ask about the meaning of life. But rather, Moshe asks a question about himself. Mi Anochi, who am I? God, this is my most pressing question. Who am I? And God answers, Vayomer, and God says, Ki eheye imach, I will be with you. What does that answer mean? Moshe says, who am I? God says, I will be with you. Well, on a simple level it means, because God had told Moshe that his mission was to go to Paro. And God says, I want you to be reassured, Moshe. You ask who you are, you're not going to go to Paro alone. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to go with you when you go to Paro. You will not be alone. I will be with you. But there's a deeper answer. And the answer is about the nature of being human. Listen, please, to the insight of Rabbi David Wolpe. Moshe says to God, Mi Anochi, who am I? And God says, Who are you? You are someone who can walk with God. You are someone about whom I, God, can say, Ki eye imach, I will be with you. You are a human being. And God wants to ensure that Moshe understands the majesty of being human. You are one who is capable that I will be with you. That you and I will stand together wherever we are, wherever we go. And once we understand that, once we understand the potential of every human being, Lahodia, to teach every single one of us, who am I? Who are you? You and I are human beings that have the potential, that have the innate value that God will be with us, that we can stand together with God. And only once we understand that, only once we understand the position of human beings in this world, capable that God will stand with us, only when we understand that, then the theme of Shamos, of Exodus, of redemption is introduced. And the process of redemption has begun. <clears throat> That's how the book begins. How does it end? Well, if it's the story of Exodus, why wouldn't it end with leaving Egypt? But we know that that's not what happened. Why doesn't it end with receiving the Torah at Mount Sinai? But we know that that is not the end of this book. The end of this book of Shemos is the building of the Mishkan, the sanctuary that God commands the Jewish people to build. The sanctuary about which God will say when we get to the parish of Truma and Tetzaveh, etc. 
God will say, Va'asuli Migdash, make for me a sanctuary, for Shachanti Besocham, and I will dwell within you. It ends with the building of the Mishkan, the completion of the building of the Mishkan, this sanctuary, which is the actual representation of the nature of man who can create a structure calling forth God to say, V'shachanti b'socham, I, God, will dwell within you. That is what you are capable of. Never forget, you are a star. Every one of us, we are a star who God cherishes and accompanies through life. And that is the theme. And that's the message of the book of Shamos that we begin this week. My friends, I want to wish you a wonderful day. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.